Once Tebus is installed, you should see a Tebus starter icon populate on your desktop. So I can open this up and this was what it'll look like here. Um, everything should be blank. And I have a couple icons in the top left corner. So my first icon is going to be the display tree. If I click on that, it'll actually show me what versions of Tebus I have installed on this computer. I can also click on the wrench and click on one version of software. And I can see the configuration file here. So I can fill this out as needed. I also see the favorite selection here. So we'll go over how to make a favorite in a little bit as well. So by clicking on this wrench, I want to get to this page and I want to make sure I fill this out correctly. Um, if you don't and you try to launch Tebus, you might run into a license error problem uh, because we don't have that pointed out at the moment. So the first uh, level here is the working directory. And this is going to be where you work out of. Um, you can always use this icon right here and click on it. And I could point this to a different directory of where I would like to actually work out of. Maybe I'm working off of a, um, a certain folder, but I can also leave this blank. Now by leaving this option blank here, as soon as I open up a CAD file or import a CAD file, maybe from SolidWorks or Katia or NX or whatever it is that you're using, it'll actually take that CAD file location wherever it was in the file explorer and make that the new working directory. So if I, I can also drag and drop a step file and I just right onto this possibly, and that will do uh, the same thing. What is needed is you need to have a directory of working file copies. Now where I usually like to point this is right on the C drive. I'll actually create like a temp folder here and I can use this. And you always want this to be local because even if your CAD file is on a server, it's going to make a copy of that CAD file here locally to your system. And when I run Tebus, it'll run completely local, which means it's always going to have a backup file that it works off of. Let's say the server goes out or the power goes out and your computer shuts down. It's still going to save a copy here. So you're not losing anything. So that's very important. Also, you want to make sure you point your library and your template uh, directories. So I can use this little icon here, go right to the C drive. So a lot of people know that if you install Tebus right on the program files folder here, right in the program files folder, I can go to Tebus AG. I can go here to uh, my version and I'll actually see the libraries and templates here. Um, typically I don't use these directories, what I would recommend is right off the C drive, there is a hidden folder called the program data. And this is more accessible to most programmers. So typically you'll point this to program data, Tebus AG. And I wouldn't even use the version. Typically what I would do is I would actually create a brand new folder. So you, in this case, I created a brand new folder and called it Tebus internal version 4.1. And I'm copying over the libraries and templates that I would like to use. So in this libraries folder here, I can double click it, then say select folder and actually make a copy of this here. And I could paste this here and then just make a slight change. So here I can move this back one and then point to my templates and say select folder. All right. So that's going to make sure that I point my local libraries and templates folder uh, exactly where I want them. Now, if I ever want to see what's in here, I could always click on the little eyeball icon that's to the right here. And by doing so, I can actually open that folder up and I could see all the external files that I'm using. Maybe I've got a special thread.txt file or a plug list that I want to use. And all that information needs to be in here as well as the templates too. I want to make sure that I'm using the correct database. So if you got multiple databases, you might have multiple different configuration files. Um, typically this stuff will fill out for you automatically. This directory is pretty uh, default. So you can see here program files, Apache software foundation, Apache FOP version 2.40. All right. And then here in the Tebus help browser, this is going to come in, come along for the ride as well. But if not, the directory is the program files, Tebus AG, 
Tebus Help Browser version four or version 1.0, and then Tebus Help.exe. Um, typically, I'll leave the file protection and create a log in the temp directory. I'll, I'll leave these off. Uh, unless you are looking for some extra protection on your files, you can kick that on. And then the CPU, uh, CPU usage, I'm going to keep it balanced. Um, I really only adjust that. You know, if I'm having, uh, I'm struggling with the software a bit and I want things to kind of have more of a priority on my computer, I, I can move that around. Um, coming down here, this is the server synchronization. So with the server synchronization, I can actually kick this on and point to different libraries and templates on my server. And what that will do is it will actually copy files over to this library directory here, wherever I point this, if the files are newer. So in case I want one area on the server, I, let's say a master file, master libraries, a master template, I could put those here on the server. And then every time I put a new external file on, maybe I want to add tooling, I got a new machine, I want to add that VM to my external machine file, that'll automatically copy over local, and then I'm ready to go. The license directory here, you could do that as well but we need to talk about that first. So anytime I, if I'm not using this, I don't want to see it. I can just use this little arrow over here, shut that down. And I'm going to shut this converter down as well. So here's the licensing option. So you want to make sure you point your license file um, to somewhere you're going to find it. Typically what I do personally is right on the C drive. Um, I'll actually make a license key folder. Now, if I make this here, I can just say select folder. That way I always know to look right at the local drive, right at license key. You can call that Tebus license or anything like that. Um, used to go into a config directory, but I believe this to be a little bit easier as long as it knows where to look for that actual license here. Okay. So then what I'm going to need to do is if I go here, let's say I download my license key from the download portal. I'm going to take this, I'm going to cut it. And then right here at this directory, I'm going to use this little eyeball, click on it. And I want to take a look at this license key here. So the one here I have is a bit older, right? So I'm going to delete both of these and then I'm going to paste my new one in here. The next thing you'll need to do is you need to re uh, name this and get rid of the NLM and underscore. So that stands for node lock manager. I can get rid of that and say enter. And now that's ready to go. When you launch Tabus, it's always gonna look for this name. So you have to be careful. Okay, so we're not completely done yet. We do need to hit this save tab to save this locally. And also you can use this save configuration as template button. Now, if I do this, what I typically would like to do is I would like to name this default and this is going to become a .cct file. So if I say save, I can now use that .cct file on any new release of software. Basically, if this was all um, empty, let's say, we can hit save, I can open this up, click on that default CCT and have this fill out automatically. And then I can save it local just by clicking on that one more time.